1400 years, literally hundreds of people claim to have seen the elusive inhabitant of the Loch's deep waters. But what have they really seen? This is perhaps the most interesting photograph of the monster, and you'll notice that it shows the characteristic features. So, an extinct plesiosaurus living in the loch? Personally, I doubt it. I believe that what those witnesses saw was actually nothing more nor less than this. A common or garden rhinoceros, floating upside down in the water, holding a French loaf in his mouth, balancing a tortoise. So, that's another mystery solved. Neville Thumbcatch worked daily at the mill, and at weekends his allotment by the hill. He sank his soul in Mother Nature's bower, growing radishes and the occasional flower. But he never listened to the Time Ram podcast, so fuck him. <laughs> yeah, fuck yes. you, Neville Thumbcatch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it. yeah, with your bower. <laughs> Whatever a bower is. Uh, it's a stolen bower anyway. It's Mother Nature's bower. Yeah. Neville yeah. Thumbcatch just appropriating it. Yeah. <laughs> Get cancelled for that. Never <laughs> them catch you. <laughs> so yeah, they, uh, nobody's going to know what any of this is about because nobody will have <laughs> Neville Thumbcatch. That's Google fine. Neville Thumbcatch. Who's Neville that's Thumbcatch? absolutely fine. They don't need to listen to the album that's also got rape on it. <laughs> oh, no, nobody needs to listen to that. Yeah. And I would have contacted Context, context. That's context just makes no sense, does it? <laughs> and sounds really be. bad. If yeah. they're not intrigued by now, if they don't know what it is, if they're not intrigued by now, then there's something wrong with them. <laughs> yes. Not that I'm saying human. No, they don't, don't feel. <laughs> but don't buy the album, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Torrent it if you must. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah. It's probably what not out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, what that this is Time Ram, the Doctor Who podcast where we randomly select a story and then randomly select a doctor that don't belong together and we ram them together. And that's what we do. That's what I do. I'm Paul Ferry, and joining me are Barry Williams and yeah. Rupert Booth. I may be calm, but I'm never empty. Oh. Cryptic. Yes. Totally a reference to the story, obviously. <laughs> It'll mean something in <laughs> maybe calm, but it's never empty. <laughs> It'll mean something eventually. In terror of the Zygons. Oh, terror of the Zygons. I think I thought you meant. Well, your, I'm glad you two are paying attention to the story. <laughs> I'm totally down with it. Yeah, I'm doing quotes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll say I'm doing quotes. I've done one quote. That'll probably be it. Yes. <laughs> Apart from, I can go. Which is That's the sound the... that that sort of sucker thing makes when Tom puts it back into the wall in episode four. I love that. I love the way it's the bother to make it go. Oh, I was, was there... going to say I didn't hear the sound. It was kind of so it was silent the first time around. Huh? No. Yeah. Is there a quote quarter? <laughs> Ooh. Only allowed a certain amount of quotes. A quarter of quotes. Have we already used it? What well, my one, one quote, quote and sound effect cannot count for the quote quarter. Well, it depends no. if you can the sound effect, I suppose, because that would be too. Um... <laughs> a quote, quote, run by the Gene Genie. That would be great. <laughs> quote, quote, let yourself go. Whoa. Or don't, because it's a quota. So, you know, don't overquote yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the quote police will be around. Yeah. Don't mess with the quote police. They're, 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 they're the, the worst good. force. Yeah. Yes. Control the men. men. And that takes some doing. Gosh. Doing quotes now. Finish with nonsense, killing quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Still with the nonsense, gone. Go ahead, time round. Yes, as you may have gathered uh, from uh, the intro, there we are doing Terror of the Zygons this week. 
It would count uh, but on we're much. doing it. Yes. <laughs> but we're doing it with the uh, gallery from my column. quote. That was then, was it? What? The, the gallery from quote. my quote then, did it? Yeah. Yeah. It served yeah. Some purpose. <laughs> yes. Of course, if I cut that out, then I have to cut everything out. So you can't. It's a, it's a, it's a it's one a of them things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a domino yeah. effect. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Anyway. It's a domino effect. <laughs> it's a time round podcast effect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Terror of the Zygons with Colin Baker as the yeah. sixth doctor. We oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Sorry, we got there. Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We haven't had a Sixth Doctor story for a while, have we? No. Quite a long while. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's behind some of the other Doctors now. William Hart, yeah. for instance. Um, Funny, because he was like the first, when we did the pilot, he was the first one we got out. Mm. He was. Um, and then kind of we had a couple early on, and then there's not been one for ages. Yeah. Patrick yeah, Trown's like that. Patrick Trown had three, I think, early on, and then nothing yeah. now for about 18 yeah. months. I mean, he's McCoy been... has loads for a while. He used to seem to be McCoy every single week for a bit, and then yeah. he just vanished. Yeah. yeah. Never heard from him again. Yeah. yeah. Putin. <laughs> Putin hates well, McCoy. He's... Yeah, he's just knocking off the doctors. He's just, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Going after them with his polonium scones. You know, he started a war in Ukraine, and we ne- we never heard from him again. It was, uh, that was it. Yeah. Mm. He was anyway, Mr. McCoy. Still around. <laughs> Yay. Can we do it in season 22, please? Just because I really can't bear to think of all that lovely location work being on video. That yeah. seems fair. Yeah, I was thinking probably Perry, yeah. Uh, I, thought you were gonna, I thought you were just going to say you couldn't bear to see all that lovely location work with Mel. There's that also. <laughs> There is that also. Um, yeah. But mainly not on horrible, horrible, OB, horrible OB video. Yeah. Because I, mean, I was crap. I was thinking, oh, it should replace Time Lash because of the sort of Loch Ness connection. But then I was thinking, oh, they, could yeah. never do, they could never do this on Time Lash's budget, though, could they? Well, we, we shift some money from Revelation of the Daleks, which we yeah. don't have to make. The two Doctors, we haven't, we haven't been filming in Spain. Yeah, they or haven't been in Spain. They've, they've Who had... knows? Yeah. So yeah, we can, <laughs> they've we can, had um, Edge of Destruction instead, which is really yeah. cheap. <laughs> That's we'll the season's going to be around, around, you know, four um, episodes. So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads of money. Yeah, it's not on this. It, it, I can't think of anything that's going to be improved apart from the Scarrison. Yeah. Yeah, that seems. There'll be changes to it though. The, Funny enough, since you mentioned uh, Time Lash, but the Scarrison, well, the Bandrels, they're basically the same thing—a hand puppet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And are we going to get? You know, are they going to go to the effort of putting it on film, uh, or are they going to wave it around in front of a CSO screen and it'll look shit? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not that far away in time, is it? It's only about ten years later. Nah. So it's, yeah. nah, it's, it's, and there's yeah. no major differences in how television is made either. You've still right. got yeah. very limited location yeah. on film. Your, 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 your um, studio done as live, vision mixed yeah. live. Mm. Around the same level of editing, I think they probably edited a bit more on time. Lash and Quantel, they had yeah. more video effects, That's yeah, it, really. yeah, not, and not, more, you know, yeah, more post. It is a, it is a shame. Graphics. I was thinking, I was thinking as I was watching Terror of the Zygons, it is a shame that uh, it wasn't in season twelve as it was intended to be on yeah. the end, because mm-hmm. that w- that would have made twelve just. Perfect, because yeah. I love twelve. Yeah. Twelve is you can tell yeah. it. You can tell it was started out as a six parter because it's got loads and loads of plot in it. Really wacky yeah. along, yeah, uh, to like the point that not the a lot of waste of time. No, I mean it just yeah. it cuts very fast from one thing to another. To the point where yeah. there, there are one or two sort of minor plot holes because it's just moving so quick. <laughs> uh, there's stuff that happens. It's a little bit inexplicable, but um, yeah. yeah, it it rattles along. It's well paced. Uh, <laughs> Shall we rattle then, uh, yes. We can rattle, yeah, yeah, we can rattle. Plus, baby. Yeah, we can rattle. We start off with the oil rig in the North Sea getting, getting yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Um, that's all I've written about that. That's it. It gets fucked up. That is what happened. Uh, I, I, I did note this time, I was like, usually, I haven't watched it for ages, but it really came back to me, how absolutely they go, this isn't Scotland, from the word yeah. go. Yeah. I mean, the first line is something like, hey, Angus, or a Willie, or something like that. Can you get us a Angus? Um, <laughs> 
Here's the chef here who doesn't get in the first thing about them. And it's kind of, oh, where are we? Is this Wales? I'm, <laughs> I'm Scottish. Do you um, understand that? Aye, because I did it. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very, very much. that. That's, I think, slightly more of its time than you'd get in an 80s one. Yeah. Yeah, you I would, mean. You would need to be quite so kind of, you know, Angus and Willie and Haggis in the first five seconds. <laughs> yes. It's very that much sounds bad. That sounds really bad. <laughs> it's very much a Londoner's view of the Scottish, isn't it? It's I mean, is, yeah. it? It's 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 your mid it's your 1975 BBC version of kind yeah. of like you've got to point out where it is, old chap. <laughs> Otherwise they just won't understand. This is the show that learn nothing from Driver Evans. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even need to be Scottish though, because he's just no, working he's out on the rig off the coast the of Scotland. Yeah, he could yeah, be yeah. from anywhere. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's a great model though. It's, it's, uh... Oh yeah. It is a nice, it's a nice model, yep. Yep. So I think that good. might look a bit better actually in, in the eighties. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Like yeah. Kelt on it. yeah. If they if spent the money and did it on film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that um, the original looks bad at all. The only thing that lets it down is the water isn't to scale. Which, the water, you know, this is the thing. Yeah. You can't, there's, there's, yeah. there's things around that. But, you now, know, this is, you see, in the 80s, they started using salt and yeah. bicarbonate of soda. Yeah. You blow it up in a plume, it looks, you know, on, it looks certainly like, at night, yeah. Yeah. it looks more like water, it looks more like, you know, waves and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, that's the one so thing they might identify. Like that, yeah. yeah. I think you might have seen a kind of a, a Nash. Yeah. A Nash. Yeah. 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 Sorry, that sound effect sounded a bit like Arnie rather than the Scarrison. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get Arnie to voice the Scarrison. <laughs> Arnie's attacking oil rigs. <laughs> Where, boys? <laughs> or he could be on the rig, just going, get to the chopper. <laughs> Bring my haggis. <laughs> Ow. If the Scarrison attacks an oil rig that's got Arnie on it, the Scarrison's fucked. Basically, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the end, end of the story. story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> kill you. <laughs> you are disgusting. So uh, we get uh, opening shot. The doctor uh, leading. Well, I guess it's going to be Perry. He's leading Perry across the moors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this is going to be tricky because there's bits in this where we kind of need two companions. And can I- can well, one of them can come from it. unit, so he can yeah. just turn up with Perry and pick up, you know. Yeah, unit. Harry. It's got to absolutely. It's got to be unit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could yeah. even bring Harry back, and I think he probably would. Yeah, why not? I mean, I, uh, I think JNT would bring Ian Martyr back. Why not? Of course he would. Yeah, Ian Martyr was, was yeah, still alive was still at that point. Yeah, he was still yeah. alive, and that is useful for this, yeah, for yeah. this uh, yes. scenario. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Yeah, I think the Doctor, the Sixth Doctor, might be wearing a kilt. Okay. He's Totally a really Ooh. ostentatious, or, like the worst tartan the worst you've, kilt you've ever seen. Tartan. Yes, yeah. or a whole totally tartan outfit. Lots of different clashing tartans <laughs> yes. to offend every single possible clan in one go. I like the yeah. way all the regulars go tartan in episode one, and then they just take the tartan off and forget about it for the rest yeah. of the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally just... <laughs> Can his wee cat now? badge go, boots, when he presses it? <laughs> because in a way, it kind of makes, it, it, it makes more sense that he would have different outfits, because... Mm-hmm. When he's first in it, six, he's kind of um, he's established as a bit of a sort of uh, peacock, isn't he? He's kind of uh, you know, yes, yeah, well, so fantastic. Done. And yet, <laughs> in that he then goes on to wear the same outfit for the entire yeah. season. You think he should yeah. really be wearing? You would vary it. Various, yeah, outrageous right. outfits. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So clashing tartans and basically whenever Perry meets anyone, she goes, "I'm not with him, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please don't malky me." because <laughs> she's been there before and knows the ling go yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and they're walking across this moorland which um, I must admit I was watching it and thinking yeah that really looks like Sussex uh, yes. <laughs> sure enough it was filmed in Sussex <laughs> <laughs> not that far from me um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway they get a lift from uh, the Duke of Forgill though he's not yeah. really introduced yet we just sort of see him wind his window down love this performance I yeah. them all the way through it from word go. Are you wanting a lift? <laughs> you don't give a fuck about you. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, I was thinking with JNT's stunt casting proclivities, oh. I think they should be Stanley Baxter. Oh, thank fuck. I was fearing a cranky. <laughs> no, no, I think Stanley Baxter. I could see him playing it. Yes, yes, 
yeah. relatively straight if somewhat yeah. arch. Yeah. 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 yeah cool. All right. They're, not, they're gonna have a problem getting Stanley Baxter into the Zygon suit there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But they're gonna do it. Yeah. Is yeah, Billy Connolly gonna be in this is the caber. Is who? who? Yes, he is. Billy, Billy Connolly. Connolly. Yeah, Connolly. that was that was kind of what I was thinking as well. Wow. With the beard and the long hair. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Excellent. Okay. Uh so um we cut to the brig. Um uh, he's um he's in a pub. And um, is it the brig? Is it is it Mr. Courtney is the brig? Because uh, but we haven't had Morgan Undead, have we? Because this is time round. Mm. Uh, or what the brigadier's retirement status is. Yeah, that's true. Had yeah. Battlefield before this. Yeah. Um, yeah. We haven't done Battlefield yet, have we? No. Why uh, don't we make it Brigadier Bambera? Okay. Yeah, because it's only like three three years. Yeah. You make that earlier, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three, that four that years. Solves all our Morgan Undead problems. Yeah. Um, oh, many, many Mordred undead problems. Oh, many Mordred undead problems. Yeah. <laughs> God knows. Yeah, we'll, get get my... the... we'll get it. As yeah, we'll get it for Hartnell or something. We'll be like, oh, yeah, no. absolutely. Yeah. It'll be the introduction of the Brigadier. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Just fucked. <up. laughs> totally how it's going to go. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, um, Bambera is there. She's in um, a very stereotypically Scottish pub. <laughs> yes. Of uh, Angus, the landlord, being by Huckle, isn't it? <laughs> hmm? uh, being heckled by Huckle, heckled by Huckle, yeah, heckled by Huckle. Um, who uh, wants to know why his oil rigs are keep getting destroyed? She's totally going, Oh, shame when he walks out. <laughs> <laughs> and the landlord's playing the bagpipes as well, and the you know, as, as if she, yeah. in case yeah. you hadn't, <laughs> you're in yes, Scotland at this point, yeah. realized that you were in Do Scotland. You see? Do you understand where this is? <laughs> Scotland. I'm watching in Scotland. See us mock you. <laughs> <laughs> I do love I do love that Angus just doesn't give a fuck though. He's just gonna play his pipes as loudly as possible yeah. while they're trying to have a meeting. Is, yeah. well. All the Scottish characters in it are really chippy though, aren't they? Particularly they are. Yeah. kind of they are, yeah. start bristling at any or East Londoners. Oh, the Cambridge would be fantastic. <laughs> Cambridge just kind of walking around going, oh, Christ! <laughs> going off on one about unit. Just while we're on the subject of um, bagpipes, uh, I'll just go <laughs> slightly off topic for a moment. Uh, um, since I moved house, I've been kind of walking down to, to visit my, my dad uh, mm-hmm. every every day or so. And uh, on, on the route, like, Two or three times about when I'm kind of halfway there, there's just like really loud bagpipe music coming from like somebody's house. And it's like, it doesn't okay. sound like it's on a recording or something. It sounds like somebody actually playing the bagpipes, kind of standing in their garden playing the bagpipes. Wow. And you must knock on the door and go, loving your bagpipes. <laughs> their neighbors must, they you know, must hate their they neighbors, must love yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless the neighbors are Scottish, because all Scottish people like bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just like Scottish people was taught us. <laughs> it's so random. I guess one of those things that like happened once, and I thought, yeah, that's a bit strange. And then it kind of happened again. I was like, all right, so this this is regular then. <laughs> it would kind of be even more weird if it was a recording, wouldn't it? Because that's someone yeah. who regularly likes listening to recordings of bagpipe music. Like somebody's really loud alarm clock <laughs> plays bagpipes. Might be the meddling monk just putting on his gramophone of yes. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Either way, yeah. it deserves an investigation. I demand you go and knock on their door and go <laughs> in the bagpipes. <laughs> First stroke, <laughs> and confuse me. So uh, the doctor and Perry arrive with uh, the duke, who um, clearly doesn't like Mister Huckle very much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is Broton, isn't it? This is Broton playing the yeah. duke. This, isn't the duke. this is yeah, Broton. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone keeps talking about how strange he is. He didn't say a word to them apparently in the car. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is fair. I mean, if I picked up hitchhikers, I wouldn't say a word to them. So I, mean, I don't know <laughs> what the problem there is. If I picked up bats, those three hitchhikers, then yeah. 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 <laughs> and actually, Colin these is. ones, I mean, these two. Yeah. Colin the and eight. his tart. You wouldn't actually tart pick him up at all, would you? It's <laughs> <Just, laughs> you know, no. one of those things where he sends Perry out and walk onto the road and kind of you offer yourself to him. And then <laughs> she goes out and sort of does the coming a lift bit. And, and then the doctor and strides and out. Ah! <laughs> Boots. And, and he's and, wearing yeah. a tartan leotard. 
She yeah. pops out on the road and about three cars screech to a halt. She yeah. pops out. <laughs> and Broton still simply goes, uh, you want to the left? <laughs> <laughs> now then, your bosom's hanging out. <laughs> Pop it back in and get in the car. <laughs> Is that the doctor he's talking to? Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're a man. <laughs> So Perry is going to be wearing high heels in the in the Highlands, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah. Well, if it's if it's if it's later on in the season, at least just allow kind of trousers and a jacket in time. Lash. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that would be more sensible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would. That would yeah. Maybe, She's not you know, in Spain. Finally, she, yeah. I, th I think Nicola Bryant got enough power to just go. I'm not wearing another fucking leotard in a store. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stop it, JNT. You're supposed to be gay. <laughs> I, I that you look back at that though, and you think, where was what what, what was where was GNT's mind? Because it's not it's not fashionable. It wasn't fashionable at the time. I don't think you know, and it's not. I mean, is it his idea of what the dads might find sexy? Well, didn't I don't she know. wear kind of a? She wore a leotard to a, a photo shoot when she was introduced uh, to the yeah. press, apparently, and it seemed to go down quite well. And you went, aha. <laughs> Leotard forever. Armless shirt thing. It's not a leotard. It's not, it's not yeah. all those things. They're not leotards. Are they leotards? But those things have gotten the first couple of stories as a blue yeah. one from back and the pink one in Vengeance on Barros. And I'm sure some of them actually are leotards. The I think, yeah, some of them are. Um, but mm. yeah. I mean, uh, in Lanzarote, it makes sense. When, when, yes. when, when you, as Nicola Bryant once said, you know, did I feel bad about wearing a bikini? Where, well, no, I was swimming in Lanzarote. That's what the character was doing. Of course I wore yeah. a bikini. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's okay. uh, it very much is is bums on seats, isn't it, for James? Yes. <laughs> but I do think he's going the wrong way about it. I, I, I think Nicola Bryant's great. Uh, it's yeah. very, I, think, you know, I think she does it really, really well and makes... What is a kind of, in many ways, quite unlikable character on the page? Likeable, yes. um, but I, I do sometimes think that J and T maybe didn't see that and just, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, ugh. it's kind of how he treated all the female companions, though, wasn't it? He, he didn't really want, he didn't, he didn't give the actors any power. You no. know, no. all the no. power was his, yeah. uh, and it was his way or the highway, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So yeah, they all get treated to a certain extent as both mm. forces, basically. Um, with with, with yeah. him reluctantly ceding some power to a script editor, but only because he has to, because he doesn't get scripts. Yeah. 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 Um But I mean it's like we were saying in one of the other episodes about uh Bonnie Langford. I mean, mm. Mel is terrible in those stories, mm. but it's not her fault. It's the way they've kind of presented no. the character. They should have gone down a route of steering her away from being the screamer mm. and, uh, yeah. you know, all Absolutely. those kind of elements that people sort of would kind of have associated with her at that time. They should have Absolutely. steered her away from that, and they didn't. They went yeah. straight into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at how she played it the wrong in, way to in, go. You know, in the modern stuff. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. played absolutely straight and down the line, and it, it's really good acting. You look yeah. at the other stuff, she's, she's kind of playing it pantomime. Yeah, um, you know it's all very up and exaggerated and, and a really odd choice. And yeah, totally play it down. Yeah, yeah. give her a chance to act because she can do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's anyway. That's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no one's looking at her at the end of the day, whatever she's wearing or not wearing, because Colin Baker's standing there in a the tight leotard. <laughs> <laughs> Has he got his yeah. knees out? <laughs> Michael Grade watched this episode apparently and went, "Oh, really." <laughs> I think not. I've got a scene here. I can't read what it is, so I'm going to skip past it. I literally got. I've been looking at this for the last five minutes. I've got no fucking clue. Sometimes we'll do a compilation of all the bits where you go. I can't read my writing. I, mean, I don't I know what this bit is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be vital plot information. I don't know. I watched it this afternoon, so it's pretty fresh <laughs> for me. If you're stuck, I can probably okay. remember. It looks like man washed his bone, but I don't know what. I don't man know. Washed what up, uh, he's, he's washed um, the guy's washed, washed, washed his shore. He's washed yeah, the shore. Sure. Man's washed yeah. the shore. That's what it is. Yeah. He's yeah. not washed the shore. That's nonsense. Teamwork. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 
best organised podcast in the world. This is <laughs> fucking reek, man. <laughs> I really need to put more effort into this. Uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, the, yeah. The doctor he's he's uh, relu- he reluctantly agrees to um, to investigate these uh, oil rigs, yeah. um, and um, he goes to visit the kind of the it's the Huckles Company, I suppose. He's kind of mm-hmm. they're in an office somewhere. I assume I'm sure. Yeah. Shell. Shell, basically. Yeah. I think I think he's going to have <laughs> a bit more of a shout about it. You know, when when mm. he's having a go at the brigadier for bringing him back with the. Time space telegraph yeah. and going, oil yeah. emergency. I think it's going yeah. to be a proper Colin Baker rant. Yeah, yeah. Why should I? I? Yeah, you're ruining sort of... the planet. I'm not going to come and help you if you can't work it out for yourselves. You know, we'll have yeah. to talk a bit. we are kind of missing the I'm scene. Barry's just standing there going, "You're the scientific advisor. What the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> not <funny." laughs> We're kind of missing. The, we're missing the scene towards the end of the story where the doctor just takes this time space visualizer and completely sabotages it. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna waste my time with just this shit. Takes yeah. the living <laughs> shit out of it. <laughs> just throws it away. Unstable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the rigs are. Yeah. <laughs> Goes in Loch Ness. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, he's kind of um, looking to that. Harry's there. Harry's. Yeah. Harry's helping yeah. out. Yeah. Harry yeah. goes that'll be, to that'll be a nice reunion. Yeah, it will be actually. Be yeah. Harry yeah. Sullivan's I live and breathe. Who's doing the music for this? It's not Malcolm, is it? Who did the music in the time last slot? Was it Jonathan Gibbs? No, that's no, that's Mark of the Rani. No, it was a oh, it was a woman. Um she only did one. Elizabeth Parker. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. I can't remember what it's like, but all right, there we are. The music is a bit odd in this, isn't it? It's Jeffrey Bergen. It's not quite yeah. it's not quite Dudley Simpson, let's put it that way. Yeah. It's no, yeah. no. But it's very atmospheric. Yeah, it's, it's quite yeah, nice. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the action scenes that it kind of misses something. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, so Harry goes to visit the sick bay, and then um, Harry, in a role as a botanist, has, has to visit <laughs> the village. <laughs> she just wants to keep it as far away from the doctor as possible <laughs> yeah. and for how he's dressed. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, they're talking about sort of radio blackouts and things happen whenever these yeah. um, bricks get destroyed. So it's a bit suspicious already. And then, uh, yeah, Perry talks to the, the publican, Angus. Yeah. Uh, she admires his head. Well, then. Yes. Dag head on the wall. Uh-huh. So that's going to be significant. Uh, <laughs> it should probably be played by the same guy, wouldn't it? It's going to be a cranky. It's he was, be uh, no, I was I was thinking that guy because he's out of crossroads and you know, GMT yeah, would have loved, he loved was every crossroad on the BBC true. for true. 20 years, yeah, yeah. Um, can't remember his name now. The Angus Lenny, Lenny, I had the Lenny part, but I kept yeah. going main. Is he actually called Angus? Angus Lenny, yeah, no. he is because yeah. <laughs> he's Scottish, Scottish, oh, Do you see? Angus. bring him his haggis, <laughs> and his poultice. <laughs> um yeah so i mean immediately we're we're not it's it's not a surprise we know that they're being watched someone's watching mm-hmm. them and they've got kind of blobby hands yeah it's um, a lovely open, it's a lovely intro to the zygons i like the whole thing of let's show you bits of the monster but keep the whole thing back. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 you know yeah mm-hmm. we get lots of atmosphere as well with so angus talks uh, quite Quite length just about mm-hmm. the, the number of people who disappeared on Tullock Moor. Yes. Going back to about 1847. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the way he talks about one that's in the late 1920s and then he goes, Oh, there was another one, but that was a while ago. That was a wee while ago, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Scottish people don't perceive time as we do. Yeah. No, they're different in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're harder, they don't have seconds, they only have minutes. That's the smallest <laughs> of time. <laughs> But yeah, like I say, this this strangeness of continuity because the last time we saw Harry, he was going to the sick bay, and then the next time we see him, he's driving a Land Rover across the moor where he mm. meets this uh, this bloke that's being swept to shore of the, of the um, oil rig. He's a doctor. He's clever. He saw what was coming yeah. and went, "Ah, oh, no, I must go elsewhere mm. in my Land Rover." Uh-huh. I mean, I suppose he just changed that with a a line change, really. That you start having going to the infirmary. Yeah, yeah, he's going somewhere. But um, Does he say at some point he wants to go and check check the site or something like that? I think he might do. Where he was found. Mm. Mm, maybe. 
Okay. It's moving very quickly, so it is quite mm, yeah. Um but yeah, they uh he meets this survivor, but then they both get shot. Yeah. Hey, the Kiba. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Kiba shoots them. What Billy Connolly? <laughs> <laughs> Not getting a lot of lines. No. <laughs> no. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the radio gets jammed again. And another rig gets destroyed. So uh, we know something. He's up. singing the Wally song as he walks along the beach as well with his gun. He's just going, <laughs> "Wasn't it for you? Where would you be?" <laughs> is he wearing I'm his a uh, man? Is he wearing his banana boots? Is that what he's wearing? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Zygon can't quite change right. <laughs> Zygon beauty. <laughs> uh, so immediately uh, they all go and um, visit Harry in hospital. He survived. He's got a craze on his forehead. So, uh, yeah, the Dr. Perry and uh, Bambera go there. And then um, the doctor almost immediately leaves again. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he's got to look at some tooth marks. He's been given some concrete. Yeah. Massive, massive tooth marks in them. Mm -hmm. And the guitar's chafing. He's finally decided he should change the clothes. <laughs> How how have we reached the doctor wearing a leotard? It wasn't me. I, this I remember that much. I thought he had to kill one. one. He's gone from kilt to leotard. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is he wearing a, cute, a, leotard, a kilt over his leotard? We were talking about Perry and her wearing a leotard, so it kind okay. of went there. I don't know. Right. She's wearing a really colourful coat because she's in Scotland. Yeah, I've been, I've been plagued with the visions of it though ever since it was mentioned. <laughs> it's not been pleasant, so I'm really keen for him to get into some normal clothes. <laughs> yes, even if it's just army fatigues. <laughs> Why are they called fatigues? Yeah. Well, it was now. Fine. I don't know. Cool. No idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. In all my travelings throughout the universe, I have battled against evil, against power mad conspirators. I should have stayed here. The oldest civilization. Decadent, degenerate, and rotten to the core. Power mad conspirators, darlings from Tarans, Cybermen. They're still in the nursery compared to us. Ten million years of absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. <laughs> yeah. We kind of, we got Perry looking after Harry in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would guess if it's anything like when she met Jamie, there's going to be some gentle flirting going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's going to yeah. be leaning over him to, you know, yeah. mop his Minister. brow. And Minister. basically he's got her chest in his face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Peter Davison was Good talking heavens. about right <laughs> yes. yeah well um, there's also there's a sinister nurse there um, Sister Lamont who's really a very sinister nurse yeah right? brilliant. isn't she brilliant yeah moment one you're like my god this is a sinister nurse yeah something not right yeah. here <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> can she be Gudrun Ewer yes she can in tribute to Kudrin, uh, yeah, absolutely, she just can. passed away at the time of recording. Indeed, yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah, excellent. Good mm -hmm. call. Yeah. At the age, what was he? Ninety eight or something? He was ninety nine. Yeah. Ninety nine. Yeah. Ninety nine. And that fits really well with Billy Connolly being the caber. Yeah. So job. <laughs> Spin-off series, Gudrun and the Caber. That's the most <laughs> Scottish title ever. <laughs> Having adventures. Yes. The Haggis. <laughs> Very Scottish adventures. Uh, they take to the road and travel around Loch Ness <laughs> forever. <laughs> so <much>. Ran, <laughs> we go somewhere else, no? <laughs> well, hi, Gudrun. Why is your voice too deep? Hi. Yes. Oh, cannot. <laughs> yeah, minge bag. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're, we're finally we're drifting to the shadows of episode one because um, mm. Harry calls the doctor to warn him and then uh, gets attacked by a Zygon. I don't see much reason yeah. for moving that pit for her. Um, Sorry, just, just you know, just uh, just talking about um, Supergrand, I, I did just think that Ian mm. Cuthbert would also be great as the Duke. Oh, yeah. my God, he would be, actually. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. he'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, let's have him instead of Stanley Baxter. We can't have two right. comedians. Stanley Baxter might, comedians. might be a bit pushing it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I can see him doing that. Yeah. Right, Ian Cuthbertson. Great. Which does mean you're going to get quite an over the top performance when he's brute on as well, though, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, all that latex and fiberglass, that ain't going to stop him. <laughs> yeah. He'll burn through that. It'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the original version, Doctor and Be Benton's there. The Doctor and Benton. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be mm -hmm. Benton? Zbigniew. 
Whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah. 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 We should talk about the Zygons at this point, shouldn't we? Since we've seen them now at the end of episode one. I mean, what a great We have seen one now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What a fantastic design. They remain a really fantastic design. You can see why the new series brought them back, because, I mean, it's such a great design. Um, Yeah. And there's a great concept behind them as well. I don't think it'll be as good. I think that's a bit of a one-off when you've got James Aitchison and John Frydlander working together. Yeah. um, And talking to each other. I think there might be a bit more lumbery and a bit more... 80s. 80s. Yeah. Might look like more, more, like, more like the Morlocks, and uh, yeah, well, not the Morlocks, no, they're just a massive, massive hydraulic penis. Um, I wasn't thinking, <laughs> what am I Morlocks. thinking of? I was thinking of something else, yeah, okay. Uh, um, the hmm. Borad, probably Borad, yeah, 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 ah, mm. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I said it'll be a, a, a prosthetic job, yeah, rather than a eh, possible, possible, mm. yeah. I do think that the 70s Zygons are so much more disturbing than oh, yeah. the modern series ones. And they, they've, they've really tried to make them um, like sinister in the, yeah. the modern series and mm. managed to actually make them less frightening yes. than oh, yeah. they are in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how. I, I can't even explain how. It's the muscle suit they, thing. I, yeah. think, I think the fact that they've got, they're, all, they're all sort of like bodybuilders, the new Zygons. Yeah. Um, and the trouble is, you look at sort of the shapes on them, and it's kind of well, that's human. That's you know. Whereas yeah. the original ones have got their arms might just extend like tentacles. Mm. They've got yeah. more octopusy thing about them, and the whole the whole um, embryo bit. They're based on embryos. Yeah. The concept, the shape wise, with you know the huge bulbous cranium. Yeah. Um, They've done well as well making three of them, isn't it? It's, I mean, that's yeah. not a cheap costume. Um, yeah. It's not like they put two of them in masks. No, they they got the, several of these things lumbering about. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so you know, absolute tri- like everyone always says and has done since 1975, absolute triumph in terms of creature design, yeah, and, mm-hmm. and performance, yeah, yeah. Zygon's a bit complete, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, they, the doctor, uh, being of your go to the sick way, you could be racist all the way through this. <laughs> <laughs> you get us cancelled. <laughs> Putin's going to come down here. Cancel me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> Polonium shite. <laughs> I'm sure Tori's new character. <laughs> Polonium shite. 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 Polonium Sean Blake off now, no act. Oh. <laughs> shite. <laughs> Where does plonium shite come from? I don't know. Plonium shite mines in Russia. <laughs> I was just thinking of the Highlander when he plays an ancient Egyptian, but that's the usual Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the character, right. I thought you meant yeah. I thought it was a question yeah. where the plonium shite come from, which actually, I suppose, is sheep and cows and things around Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so be people. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> ben was telling me about that about Highlander. They wanted him to play in McLeod, <laughs> and he said, "No, no, I don't want to play that character. I want to play the, the, the Egyptian." <laughs> and they go, "You're Scottish. We want you to play the Scottish character." <laughs> no, we get this Frenchman. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get a Frenchman to play the Scottish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Lambert sounds so strangulated throughout the entire film as well, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah. See the entire cast just bodily carrying him through that film. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've been alive for four and a half centuries. And I cannot die. Well, everybody's got their problems. Anyway. Uh, (laughs) So, uh, yeah, uh, they turn the sick bay, the Harry and Perry are missing. Um, Harry and Perry. Harry and Perry. Harry and Perry. Harry and Perry. Uh, the nurse is kind of, um, oh, I don't know where they are. Uh, the doctor's <laughs> racism continues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Effie. Good. Jinx, man. Um, yeah. I'm terrified, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I am sudden. 
Um, All right for you, you're miles away. We're dangerously close. Yeah, we're, we're really up here. So don't, yeah, don't listen to the southerners. They could they could send a crew right. down. Yeah, they could. Yeah, yeah. They could. we watch ITV. <laughs> they can't reach down here. It's too hot for them. <laughs> <laughs> they melt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Welsh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't mock the nations and regions. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah. So I mean, the doctor's immediately suspicious. He evades the nurse. He kind of kind of ducks out of the sight and goes back the other way. Mm -hmm. And he finds the decompression chamber that they've got there for their deep sea divers. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's Perry in there. Yeah. Um, and then um, he kind of goes heaving in. Heaving a bit, I imagine. Hmm? Heaving a bit, I imagine. Heaving a bit. She's on the floor. She's yeah. heaving. Well, she will be in a moment because he goes in there and then the yeah. Zygon locks them in. Yeah. And uh, starts reducing the pressure. He has changed now, hasn't he? He's not wearing a leotard anymore. Let's, let's hope so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, my, in my mind picture. <laughs> I don't want to think of them heaving in an oxygen chamber together. <laughs> in leotards. Not with Actually, leotards. Like yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's not good for them. Um, Harry, meanwhile, uh, has been taken to uh, a spaceship. It's not. It's not made immediately clear where he is actually, but he's in the. Yeah. He's in the Zygon spaceship. Yeah. And he gets to meet Broton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, who crashed there centuries ago and uh, plans to conquer the Earth with this garrison. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. He's not skimping the details of his plan. He's like he's happy to explain, yeah. lay it out for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. he is doing we'll that go. funny thing of explaining, but 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 he kind of carries it off because he's just so incredibly confident. Yeah, yeah. like we've got you. You ain't getting out. We're gonna we're gonna make you into one of us anyway. So hey, yeah. Mm. So he's got he's got six episodes of plot worth to get through. So yeah, he's he's got he's cracking on now. The Scarrison mm. and the yeah. Zygons and they oh, yeah. rely on lactic fluid for survival. They so rely on the lactic without, fluid. Yeah, without Scarrison milk, they're fucked. Yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's going on in the new series? Where's the scarison? Have they got like lots and lots of bottles? <laughs> yeah. Or have they got a scarison? They've got a lot of frozen scarison fluid in the in the fridge. In the fridge, right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well that's my assumption, right. you know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It does seem odd that this species evolves to, you know, need I mean, we can exist on many different foodstuffs. Mm. Yeah. Including vegetation and things like that. Um and, and the fact that the, that the zygons, you know, are still a bit Tied to the, they're a bit mummy's boy in that way, aren't they? Did they we never get the scene That's though. What I always yeah, huh? we never we never get the scene of the Zygon sucking on the lactic fluid. I yeah, mean, that's so what they, I they suckle yeah. on the on the. Yeah, that does rather imply garrison. that Garrison is female, and a mammal, and a mammal. Yeah, maybe the Garrison just like swims up to the spaceship, you know, like sticks their teeth against Why? the. Uh... Some kind of opening, and they all yeah. kind of line up and just go, ooh. Nom, 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 Are you nom. sure this isn't Amsterdam you're thinking of? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got them lapping it up like a cat there, so that's basically yeah. how they do it. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Unless it well, goes in for those suckers. Process, you know. Know. It would have been nice if we'd just see them kind of like passing out glasses of milk at one point. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. the control chamber. Um, yeah. <laughs> speaking of which, I do love their ship. I do love the sets. The oh, sets yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, actually, the, sets, the yeah. design in this story is great throughout. Mm. Really yeah. above average for the time. Mm. Um, yeah, really good stuff. Yeah. Um, he he, yeah. he likes putting money into the design. Yeah. yeah. Like getting all the designers talking early as well. They're very, very sensible in that way. Yes. Yeah, the only time it really happens in classic series. Yeah. It is. It is. It's very non BBC. Yeah, because he was an yeah, ITV man, wasn't very, he? Very yeah. compartmentalised. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like he kept that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was very non-BBC, wasn't he? Um, yeah. yeah. And thus he spends the money more efficiently. Yeah. And it looks more expensive as, as a result. Yeah. And somehow they never learned from that, did they? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> no. No, j and didn't. <laughs> no. So, uh, and apparently j and was pretty good with the money. He was pretty good at spending yeah. money. But the trouble is, he's also just, like, wax them out on Dolores Gray. Wax some money out on Dolores Gray, <laughs> that is, I meant. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But poor Broton, he doesn't want this lactic fluid. He's kind of, he turned the scarce into a cyborg. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seems a bit silly. 
Yeah. I'm not quite sure what you were thinking yeah, there. I don't but... know. I don't know. I mean, if you had a cow and you could make it into a cyber cow, would you? Cyber cow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're heading into the cow ram territory again. <laughs> again, you're thinking of Amsterdam. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, and it doesn't mm. look very cyborg either. No. No. I don't it's know where the bits come in. Yeah. And not an alien, but these are aliens. Mm. Yeah. So that's mm. fine. So yeah, back in the village, um the 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 brig, Rambira, she gets gassed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's in the pub, she gets gassed. Um mm-hmm. gassed in the pub. We've all been there. We've yeah. all been there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of intercut with the doctor putting himself and Perry into a trance. Yeah. Um to try and survive in a, mm-hmm. a a near vacuum. Um, fortunately for them, Benton turns up pretty sharpish because mm-hmm. looking pretty poor for them, uh, the prospects. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he managed to equalise the pressure. Maybe Colin, instead of putting in a trance, would get those his kind of um, his uh, needles out that he uses on Jamie and uh, the two doctors. He's got nowhere to put them in the in the leotard. Yeah, where's he keeping his needles, man? <laughs> well, is he wearing a leotard? I think they're in Sporan. They're in Sporan. They're in a dangerous in his, place to in, keep needles. They're in his <laughs> needle pocket in his Sporan, yeah. Now, does that mean at some point the doctor, at the, the critical moment, you'll just like twig himself on his Sporan and fall unconscious? <laughs> so he's turned up in Scotland with a Sporan for needles. Is he going to choose life? <laughs> <laughs> he's clearly choosing life. <laughs> And again, I'm not sure if he, if he turns up in Glasgow looking like that. Maybe he isn't. But, um, yeah. I love when he does the acupuncture bit uh, with, with Jamie and, and the two doctors. Mm-hmm. And clearly, so the, the, those needles have got like little kind of sticky bits on the end of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just like sticks on his skin. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're not really needles at all, are they? <laughs> it's a very different scene without Tom's eyes, though, isn't it? It's sort of kind of boring yeah. to you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really kind of. Yeah. Uh... Who's directing this? It's not going to be Canfield. It's not Canfield, no. Who directed Time I'm, Lash? I'm afraid it was uh, <laughs> Pennant Roberts. Pennant Roberts. Pennant Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, sorry. I don't like Pennant Roberts. I don't like people write with him so much. Because he, <laughs> hey? he did some shit stories. Hey? You did some shit stories? Yeah, but they weren't shit because of what he did. Well, yeah, according to him, yeah. All the actors yeah. seemed to love him. He seemed to be very good with actors. Mm. Th- had mm. he been a? Was he? Am I right in thinking he was previously was an actor before he was a? Director? He might have been. A lot of directors yeah. started out as actors. Yeah. A lot of that era seemed to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Just gave it up and did something more lucrative, presumably. Mm. So anyway, um, they come to and they immediately run back to the village where they kind of have to wake people up. The entire village has been knocked out. Yeah. And uh, we, we it transpires that this is so that Essie can come out of Loch Ness and mm-hmm. get to the sea without anyone seeing her. Yeah, yeah. Which is a really long-winded and weird way of doing it. If you're a Zygon, wouldn't you have like boring technology? Yes. A tunnel. Yeah, I mean they have the problem that Loch Ness is way above sea level. It would contaminate, wouldn't it? And you could be, it could be, you could have a. Well, I think they say they got a tunnel from Loch Ness to another lock, and then they go go overland from. That's Loch Ness it, yeah. The, the Devil's sea. Punch Bowl. Devil's Punch Bowl. That's right, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because Loch Ness is a fifty, it's a fair distance above sea level, so it's yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Poor man. They spent ages trying to go at money. night. Oh. <laughs> Nobody would notice, you know. I'm sure even in Scotland, people go out at night time. I'm, I'm sure the people have got lights. Um, yeah, but nobody's going to believe the people who are wandering around the moor in the middle of the night. Yeah. Something back and forth, commuting to work, you know, basically. Just have nosy bonk music. He's wearing a little ball of hat. Yeah, yeah. On his way to work. Morning. That's terrible to take me there. Just read the newspaper, refusing to talk to him. Yeah. I'm having a divorce. Leave me alone. <laughs> and there's these weird little creatures that keep sucking me teats, man. <laughs> Get off me teats. That reminds me of either of you ever seen Amazon Women on the Moon, the comedy of course I have. film. 
Yeah. Well, that's the, the thing about oh. um, Jack the Ripper being the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? Um, here we are. Yes. So Huckle turns up. He's got this signal device uh, that they found on the the oil rig wreckage, mm-hmm. uh, and um, Broton spots this and um, immediately sends Harry to be body printed. He's a bit of an epi, doesn't he? About it, yeah. It goes a bit nuts. He's really mm-hmm. concerned about this. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. more concerned than he needs to be. Try that activator. Yeah. Try yeah. That. <laughs> so uh yeah we, we kind of see the back room where they, they've already got the nurse and the caber in there and um yeah they're gonna body print harry so it's not looking good for him um and uh yeah so you need to wake up here in good renew and billy Connolly just stuck in these bits to organic <laughs> right? loving it yeah. loving it <laughs> yeah billy Connolly getting a great role here brilliant yes yeah. really yeah, good for him absolutely. um yeah Proving his acting chop, acting chops at all now. <laughs> yeah. I used to give him that role in. I was about to say Mrs. Doubtfire, but it's not that. It's Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. Yeah, he's going. I turned down Mrs. Brown for this. <laughs> um, Christ! <laughs> and there's this wee creature trying to suck my teeth too. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's dead soldiers out on the moor. Um, mm-hmm. Sergeant, Sergeant, find it. Uh, <laughs> It's a big deal with that thing. <laughs> yeah. Him, uh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's been crushed. Crushed to death. Why? Yeah. Um, and then we get uh, we get um yeah, Harry turns up. Harry turns up at the pub and takes the signal device and runs off. And Perry has to great, here. yeah. I love what yeah. he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get a really exciting scene. You feel like this should be the end of the episode. It's not. We've got loads to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you yeah. get this really scary sequence in the barn where he, he looks like he's going to stab her. Um, Great stuff. Yeah, tremendous. Both play it superbly and it's directed beautifully and, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Again, no one else is going to do this as well as Canfield does it. It's just so, no. uh, so well put together. It's great. It is. It is. Yeah. It never gets mentioned when people mention about the, you know, the really horrific bits of the Tom Baker era. They never mentioned that scene. And it is one mm-hmm. of the most genuinely terrifying bits of the entire really scary, era. Really creepy. Absolutely real. Yeah. I mean, Ian Marta nothing, plays it. I mean, apart from him being a Zygon, there's, there's yeah. nothing yeah. that couldn't happen. In Ian Marta life. plays it so well. He's so scary, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, he is. It's completely turned, you know. By doing not very much. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. It's great. He was a really good actor, Ian Marta. Yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah. And by son. And writer, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we get the scene where he, he spikes himself basically, and it's a Zygon, yeah, and he's dead. Um, so we carry on with there's more. There's um, it's uh, funny enough, it's it's uh, Sarah Newsom, but Imperial's in this one. It's got the the nous to go to the doctor, you know, I think we're being watched, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, which is quite significant. That's nice, mm. nice to give mm. Perry a moment like that, actually, which is pretty, yes, it would, uh, yeah, capable, you know. Um, I'm thinking anyone could be a spy, but uh, the doctor thinks it's probably a bug. Yeah, they don't really go down the paranoia route of it could be anyone, really, do they? They probably could have no. done more of that. Yeah, but where? I mean, as you said, the story's packed anyway. There's no, no, they're space. racing through it, they're racing through it. There we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, the signal device comes to life and <laughs> broke on the table. I bet that's how they did that. <laughs> yeah, it would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the doctor decides to take it out on the moor, uh, which is not a good plan. <laughs> Immediately pursued by Scarazin. Yeah. We're going to get a big be... close up. We're going to get a crash zoom onto Colin's face at the end of the song. Oh, yeah. clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lies there in the heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Squish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Colin's not going to like that running across the moors for ages, is he? He's not going to be keen on that. <laughs> no. I think we've established he is in normal clothes now. <laughs> Because of the chafing. <laughs> there used to be a thing back in like the pirate video days where some people were ob- obsessed with the fact that they were convinced that when Tom has the thing stuck to his hand mm. and he's trying to shake it off, that he said frigging thing, which he clearly yeah. doesn't. He says filthy thing. But there were people that would absolutely argue the toss that he said frigging thing. I remember that from back in the day. 
Because yeah. I watched it, I watched it, and I I thought I thought for a while he, he kind of goes fucking fucking yeah as if he's done fucking um <laughs> yeah but yeah. I mean, on on modern sort of clean copies of it, you can quite clearly, clearly see, hear that he says a uh, filthy thing. Yeah, um, yeah, filthy yeah. thing is what he says. Yeah. But uh, there was people that really would argue the toss that he said frigging thing, <laughs> <laughs> like they would have let that go out on. Uh... This, this was the fans before they had the internet; they had nothing else yeah. to do. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You couldn't get a video copy up on your phone right there and then, so you could yeah. just make it the toss on night. Yeah, you know? the toss on, on Gallifrey based on any number of social media forums, so they're fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Back in the, back when we were on Usenet, do you remember Usenet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, I remember Usenet. Oh yeah, <laughs> very texty. Very texty. Yeah, very testy. Very texty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so fortunately, Harry escapes back in the ship. He escapes and uh, he kind of um, buggers about with the controls. And um, yeah. yeah, the doctor survives in ways. Um, yeah. It's not entirely clear, but he does survive. Mm-hmm. And then Broton gets a bit nervous and recalls the scars. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of back. Uh, but uh, there's been plot developments because uh, the unit have managed to triangulate the signal yeah. to tell that it's coming from. Look mess, mm-hmm. yeah, which is great. And um, we've just we just had the end of, of one of our our first part, haven't we? Because it'll be forty five minute episodes. I suppose yeah. so. Yeah, you're gonna. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it'd be there, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's a lot to cram into forty five minutes. That's a lot of plot. It is. It really is. It really is. Um. Yeah. Well, you can cut down a bit where Angus is talking about the Jemison boys and all that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's it, though. That's about <laughs> it, yeah. And that's <laughs> local colour, really. I mean, that's, you know. I know, it's lovely as well, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. They need ways to simplify this. But, uh, yeah. Oh, well. Um, yeah. Soldiering on. So, uh, yes. Um, the the, the Bambera and uh, Perry go out in the Land Rover and they collect the Doctor. Okay. And then um, they decide to visit... Um, Full Gill Castle with the Duke lives because he's on the shores yeah. of Loch Ness. Um, again, it doesn't look much like Loch Ness. I've been there, it doesn't look much like that. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she haven't been there, I should go there. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Big lake. Big lake. Yeah. I didn't see a monster. Um, no. no. I doubt I will. No. Probably not. Hmm. I imagine the gift shops are full of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh yeah so uh yeah they go there and they tell the duke that there's something in the lake which he's a little bit skeptical about i quite enjoy the scenes with the duke mm-hmm. oh, great. <laughs> john would loving it john i love the story it. about Douglas Campbell folding him up and, and sort of laughing his face off and saying okay i've got a great part to offer you he's an alien who keeps turning himself into a scottish duke and i want you to play both parts <laughs> <laughs> on the face of it does sound a bit ludicrous John Woodnut's like, yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's one of those reliables, isn't he, John Woodnut? I've never yeah. seen him have that performance. He's really he's good in this story. To watch. He's, he's great, yeah. 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 And he's yeah. terrifying as the Thin Man. Where is he playing the Thin Man? What is that? And the Boy from Space. Ah, Boy from Space. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Terrifying. Right. Up against Gabriel Wolf, who was playing Peep Peep's father. So uh-huh. season 13 is a bit of a Boy from Space fest. Hmm. <laughs> It's not. There are two actors who are in the same thing. It's fine. Just leave me alone. <laughs> how, how many actors are in the Boy from Space? It's not many, is it? Um, um, not many. No. 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 But two of them are in season thirteen. Fine. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the prime bad guys of their stories. So <laughs> yes. And if I find out later that I don't know the guy who played Mobley in Seeds of Doom was also in the Boy from Space, then victory. <laughs> Well, anyway, they've, they have a nice little scene here where they tell him they're planning to depth charge the monster in the lock, and he's uh, mm-hmm. he's um, understandably skeptical. Um, mm-hmm. uh, meanwhile, uh, back at the pub, the uh, Zabinyev, Zabinyev has been um, looking for bugs <laughs> over yes. Angus's objections. There's no bugs in my pub, oh, uh, <laughs> but then Angus he spots he spots that the head's a bit weird. There's something odd about mm-hmm. the head, and then uh, before he can do much about it, the nurse comes in. And she kills him. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns into Zygon and kills him. Turns into Zygon, yeah. kills him, and then gets chased by the sergeant. And, you know, mm-hmm. 
uh, across the uh, across the moor and shot yeah. and shot. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I do love that scene where you know a little bit later, a short time later, where she wanders out and there's this unit private stood by as Land Rover. I don't know what he's doing there, guarding the Land Rover. Oh. Um, and you know, he talks to her a bit, and then after she's got this massive, massive pile of blood running down her entire arm, goes, "Hey, you've been hurt." Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Well done, <laughs> that guy. He's like he's too polite to mention it. So he's telling me I'm not a first aider. Um, <laughs> it's a very British thing, isn't it? Someone's got blood streaming down their arm. You mm. kind of, Shall I say anything? No, yeah. no, no, it's fine. No, no, no. no. Uh, no, no. Uh, talk about the weather. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, yeah, that's a safe subject. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, you've you've got some you've, you've got, got some holes in you. you. Yeah. yeah, got a little thing there. Yeah. All the way down the <laughs> I was thinking when I was watching this, I do quite like the fact that the Zygons in this are susceptible to gunfire, oh, you know. Right, yeah. Rather than like every monster in the modern series is mm. impervious to any yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. gunfire or anything. And you in know, the Bowie and... era, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I mean when the Brigadier does finally shoot Broton, on, you almost want him to go, ah fuck, my gun works. Yeah. <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're, the a, show. <laughs> if you're a kind of blobby, tentacly thing, you know, that's you're not going to be you know, walking yeah. around yeah. nude, basically, you know, you yeah, are no. going to be susceptible to getting shot. Yeah. You yeah. Know. I mean, nice yeah. warrior. Yeah. Okay. They've got a big armored carapace. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, an auton, they made a plastic. All right. Fine. But, yeah. Uh... Yeah. You're right. Zygons are basically nude, aren't they? That's that's disturbing now. You mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Doctor Who monsters are nude. Mm. <laughs> Most of them are. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he's he's like Action Man down there. He's got nothing. He's kind of, you know. Tractators are nude. It's yeah. maybe just hidden away. Menoptera are nude. Maybe it's the suckers. Maybe that's how they kind of attach to yeah, each other. Lungs. Not yeah. a shred of cloth on them. <laughs> yeah. Was it Michael Bryan objected to the Sea Devils being nude? It was, like, it was Michael Bryan, yeah. And I uh, thought, I was just thinking Michael Bryan also put little tabards on the um, colony, the colony in space thing. Yeah. He had sense. Oh, yeah. They've got, they've got little tabards on. Yeah, so yeah. clearly they have genitalia. <laughs> Fendal's nude. Yes. Yeah, well, you know. Um, yeah. I, I don't mind it in the Fendal for some reason, but, you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. That's maybe, nice. maybe because he's not humanoid. Maybe because he looks like a giant. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Otto's nude. <laughs> if Otto's clearly nude, we can tell you Otto's nude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Erato is the most nude of them all. <laughs> he really is very, very nude, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. He's just got it all out there. Erato is nuder than you could ever be. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, that, for some reason, that reminds me of kind of, I remember seeing years and years ago on the, the front cover of like The Sun or something like that, when they used to have page three, mm-hmm. kind of about one of their models saying, you know, whoever it was, you know, let's say Jordan for the sake of argument. Uh, <laughs> More naked than ever, and I remember even at the time thinking, surely that's you know, that's How is that possible? a finite naked, thing. You're either, surely, you're yeah. either not, they taken you're either naked, yeah. or you're not naked. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be more naked than being naked. You've got clothes partially clothed, clothed naked. The <laughs> yeah. variations are in the partially clothed area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no yeah, further stage. A podcast that talks about variations in the partially clothed area. <laughs> yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I do think it's amazing now. They, I mean, uh, Samantha Fox turned up on page three in uh, The Sun. They can't show that now legally because yeah. she was less than 18. She was 15. Yeah. Or, she was 16 she was or something like that, which was... Nah, uh, I think to begin with, she was perfect. 15. Really? Seemed to recall seeing a documentary with her on it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, she kept it quiet as well. And she got paid well, but she was technically underage in um, the first time she got the boot for the lads in The Sun. Didn't they have a countdown? Did they? To you're her think, becoming. You're thinking legal. Charlotte Church. That's what you're thinking. Well, you're no, thinking. no, I thought that. It's even creepier. But yeah, yeah. They, did, they did a Charlotte countdown Church. for Charlotte Church. Charlotte Church, yeah. When she was started out as a singer. She didn't get them out on page three, did she? No, but the son did no. a countdown for when she was legal. Oh my God, she was legal. Yeah. Jesus wept. I know, it's horrendous. Yeah. And then they, and now they like take the high ground about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> various yeah, stars yeah, yeah. and you're thinking yeah you should look at your own past yeah i don't know well, they're not really should die yes it would <laughs> yes it'd be yeah. glorious <sighs> yes 
Anyway, one minute thirty-five. Uh, what, what, else, what else can we get in? <laughs> yes, we're, we're, we're yeah, diverted yeah. off on we're yeah. a little bit behind here. Yeah, Area. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, well, uh, the Doctor and Bambera have to run back to kind of help yeah. out shooting Zygons, uh, leaving just Perry in this library, mm-hmm. um, investigating stuff. Um, Things are big pair of steps. Yeah, Billy Colony comes in with some big old steps. Christ, that's <laughs> very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you both. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have noticed, and he puts these steps down in a way that means that as soon as she gets on them, they're going to fall over, and then we yeah. have to another shot, and then she gets on them, and she's fine. But yeah. Yeah. initially, I'm like, oh, my God. Health and safety. Yeah. It's horrendous. That's um, a typical sort of nobody's told the actor how it's supposed to actually go. Yeah. yeah. Thing, yeah. Isn't it? I can't yeah. see how you can get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not rocket science, no. Considering <laughs> the way it's constructed, it can only extend, you know, correctly one way. <laughs> yeah. But, hey. That's that. Maybe he's being a Zygon. Maybe he's just going, oh, Christ, Earth shit. I don't know, Ken, how it works, man. It's his first attempt at murder. He's going out, ah. (laughs) She'll never notice. (laughs) She'll go flat on her ass. I'm not going to call me balloon feet anymore. (laughs) Commercial time. We are going on a journey. A very long journey through the world of the target novelizations and publication order. Every week we are looking at a new book talking about Terrence Dix, Malcolm Hulk, and all our Doctor Who novelization friends. Whatever you do, keep turning the pages. This is Jason Miller of the Doctor Who Literature Podcast, a member of the Direction Point Podcast Network, and you are listening to Woof Time Round. Uh, where were we? So, yes, Perry's in the library. Um, yeah, with the lead pipe. With the... <laughs> in your dreams. Uh... <laughs> Cut that. I was thinking about Cluedo. I don't know what you were thinking about. Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean... While this is going on, obviously the Doctor and Bambera realise that the Duke's behind it all, uh, so they kind of they're rushing back again. Yeah, because I mean he brought the head, the stag's head to the pub. I think that's kind of the reasoning. Yeah, but you know he's perfectly pleasant to her. Really, he doesn't actually mm-hmm. impede her in any way until she finds yeah. a secret passage and then uh, follows the secret passage down to a spaceship under the lock, like you do. Yeah. She, I do one thing I find a bit dodgy is that this is the first book she pulls out and the secret passage opens. <laughs> yeah. And he must have known that was where the secret book was that opened the secret passage. Yeah. And he, you know, could he just have maybe gone, oh, didn't you look on that shelf though? <laughs> but, uh, I keep being... oh, so, and they don't even watch her, do they? Oh, we'll put her in the library where the secret passage is and then we'll just <laughs> plug her off and then I go, will it? <laughs> you, you'd almost think, you know, this would work if it was a plan, as in we want to kidnap her. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got bargaining material. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so, but, but yeah, all right. It's a minor point. It's a minor point, yeah. It, yeah. You know, we're getting the plot where it needs to go. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's some quite fun stuff, isn't there, where she's kind of trying these doors and then she keeps jumping mm-hmm. back. And then, yeah. you know, it's, it's some extra thought that Liz Slavin's put into it. Lovely so, acty stuff, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was scripted. It goes on quite a while. So, I mean, clearly, I mean, if it wasn't scripted, then, yeah. Look, the Scanfield's mm. fully on board with it. Mm. Um, yeah. It's quite a lengthy little sequence. Um, and then the, the nurse turns up and the, the Duke's there and uh, the cable and they all follow her inside. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, she goes in, she frees Harry, she finds Harry in there, she frees him. And um, we don't quite get the revelation at this point that the, the Duke is, is brought on, do we? It's kind of held back a little bit. Yes. I don't know if that's deliberate or not. It's just it's a fun, it seems like a missing moment there somewhere. But yeah, the, the doctor turns up. Episode four, doesn't he? He does it in episode four. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, the, the doctor turns up with um, with uh, the Bambera, basically in time to what? In time for bumping into Perry and Harry escaping again. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's not much time to build tension because it's kind of it's happening so fast. <laughs> uh, but then uh, yeah, the Zygons turn up. Mm-hmm. And uh, they capture the doctor. Um, and off they go with him. Um, give some threats, like yeah, proper Doctor Who monsters, 
yeah, do threats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh Bambera, good as a word. Says, right, we're gonna depth charge it. We'll go ahead and depth charge it. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah. Would Colin have a rant again here? That's your answer to everything, isn't it? You know, that sort of thing. Well, Colin's yeah. in the ship, he's been locked up, so he's, oh, so he he's not so there. He is. Yeah, yeah. I so... wouldn't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gets locked in the cell and the ship takes off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Flies away. Oh yeah. Yeah. End of episode three in the visual version. So yeah. yeah. Um so you need to kind of try and attract the, the ship. The, the chroma key shot of it flying away over the background would probably look a bit better, I think. It's not yeah. amazing. Yeah. No. Which um, is a shame because all the film stuff of it, the stuff on the seabed, on, on the on the riverbed rather, the loch mm. bed, is yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Fantastic stuff. Mm. Uh, obviously when it surfaces, you can't get around the fact that the water is too big yeah but, um yeah i heard a story a while ago that keith barnfartler at some dwas convention in the late 70s leaned on the zygon ship and broke it because it was made of card <laughs> no it can't have been you don't submerge card yeah yeah don't make a model that's going underwater out of card you just don't so no. i don't understand that no. that's the built two but i don't see why why not just build one that does all the things well, there's one that gets blown up in the story anyway. So that's... no, that's a separate one. Yeah. That's a separate one. If you yeah. if you freeze frame that, as I may have done, uh, you can see <laughs> it's a, it's a cut apart one that's ready to explode. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. So I do that sort of thing. Yeah. Because it's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, ship flies off. Um, we we'll get some scenes with sort of Harry and Perry sort of investigating the castle. They find a few clues. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that Forgill's the head of the Energy Commission. Yeah, Scottish... a bit of a it's yeah, it, it it doesn't add a huge amount. We 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 learn yeah, yeah. Forgill's the head of the Scottish Energy Commission, but that's mm -hmm. you know yeah, uh, that's, that's all that's that really it, comes yeah. out of it. It's nice yeah. character stuff, though. It's nice character stuff. Again, yeah. it, in a six part episode, you can six part story. You can imagine them spending longer there. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we're kind of we're moving on fairly quickly. We get uh, the ship lands in the quarry. They block the radar, so the brigadier doesn't know where they are. Um, yeah. It's one of probably the first time in the Hinchcliffe era, but not the last time that we have a quarry standing in for a quarry. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes indeed. Which I don't think it happens anywhere else in Doctor Who, but Hinchcliffe obviously <laughs> like that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Where else did it happen? Oh, Castria. No, not uh, Hanafia. Hanafia, yeah. and you know, I suppose yeah. um, Terror of the Autons. These are death. Isn't it? Not season, season Doom. Yeah. yeah. Isn't there a quarry as a quarry in Terror of the Autons? There's a quarry in Terror of the Autons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, so the Doctor's locked up on uh, um, the ship. Proton kind of decides to show off. Yeah. <laughs> Turns back into Four Girl, going, ah, mm -hmm. look away. Yeah. Um, Probably really sarcastic about it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's got lots of plans for the Earth. He's going to remake the Earth for the Zygon refugee fleet. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it'd be nice if that would tie into the uh, the later stories that they did. Was, unfortunately, the fleet's not meant to turn up for a couple of hundred years or something. Yes, I, I thought, the same, as I was watching it, I thought, oh, that's clever. And then he went, it'll be a couple of centuries. And I thought, no, it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 like Mandragora is meant to come back around the boat now, but where is it? <laughs> where is it? Where's Mandragora? Yeah. I, I yeah. ask myself that every day. Well, Get your finger it? out. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the fact that Tom addresses the fact that there's only about six of them, though. You know, mm. so he does, an elephant yeah. in the room. <laughs> you have to yeah. come out and wave a tentacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that's quite scary. That you know, even with six of them, they could win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, well, I mean, they do throughout. Just go. Ah, we've got Scarrison. Ah. ah, yeah, they do. Ah. Yeah, and it's yeah. not all that. Yeah, it's not got these eyes. <laughs> It's a nice little scene where the brigadier takes a call from the prime minister and goes, uh, "Yes, madam." Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, the famous madam scene. Yeah, the famous madam scene filmed around the time that Thatcher became leader of the Toy Pie. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. are we going to have that? I don't think we're going to have that in the eighties necessarily, because I think that the there was a certain there had been an erosion of respect for politicians by that point. Yeah. Didn't Colin say that he'd be a bit disrespectful to her because he did that in yeah. the play, didn't he? She's yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. The yeah. Adventure. He's a bit yeah. cheeky. Yeah, it'd be nice if he did that. Yeah, so he's so, not there. It's just, uh, it's just Bambera. Yeah. You might have, but Bambera rolls her eyes a bit and then takes the call. Yeah, that's something like uh, politicians always trying to interfere. Yeah, <laughs> never getting anything done. Oh shame! shame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, the doctor's tampered with the ship. Um, he's managed to escape. Well, he hasn't escaped. He's, he's got the loudspeaker system, wherever it is. He's kind of tampered with it. Yeah. That sends a signal out so they can find the spaceship. What can I do with sound effect again? Go on. In. Yeah. Nothing. Still in the air. Nothing. <laughs> One more time. No. Oh, I'll get close. <laughs> no? Oh. It's actually blanking oh. my sound effect every time. Yes. Yeah. Motherfucker. That's sound <laughs> effect gate. <laughs> You've got it? a sound effect gate on. You yeah. need to turn off your sound effect gate. Anyway, so yeah, uh, he gets zapped basically in the process. Proton thinks he's dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really check. He's oh, he's dead. He underestimated the power of organic crystal yeah. photography. He I did. Love that line. He yeah. did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great line. We've yeah. all done it. <laughs> We've all done it. Yeah, I've been, yeah. been there. I've yeah. been there. Uh, you know, every day. Made. Every day I do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, as soon as his back's turned, the doctor wakes up and escapes. So you know, yeah. we'll see. You know, mm -hmm. um, you have a Colin Maker esque radiophonic flourish as well when he gets up. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he'll have some ah, kind of fuck organic crystallography. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say he'll have some kind of quip, but yeah, fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's the quip. <laughs> quip. <laughs> In the time round universe, what doctor who went out at eleven at night from day one. <laughs> Sure, he doesn't go. Aha, you nonce! <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so you cannot be a nonce. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he, he frees Fulgil and the Kiba and yeah. the nurse. Um... Oh Christ! He's <laughs> fucking this fucking Jew for ages. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Proton is left for his conference. So uh, the doctor basically <laughs> he sets off the fire alarm. You know, mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's gone quite well. Then he, he, he escalates, I would say. He escalates mm -hmm. from there. He sets off the self destruct. <laughs> um, which, okay. I mean, you know, Colin gets criticized for being quite bloodthirsty. But yeah, the yeah. doctor basically blows yeah. up all the Zygons here without a second thought. He does. He's he like, does. Fuck well, they are going to destroy the world. Yeah. They're going to kill everyone. This is the I same mean, doctor that gives the refugee status later on, you know. We're, we're all fans of a multiple mass murderer across species, <laughs> which would be genocide. You know, that's our hero. <laughs> Let's face it, guys. Certainly in this story, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. The doctor uh, is not a choir boy. Yeah. <laughs> they lost their planet, but, you know, fuck them. <laughs> so, yeah, the ship explodes basically at the same moment that the unit arrive. So, uh, very nice explosion. Yeah, mm -hmm. Lovely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lovely done. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's just Broto on the Scarrison left at that point. Um, he's called the Scarrison down to the Thames. And uh, there's going to be an energy conference in um, in this building uh, yeah. called S Scarbrook House or something like that. Or mm -hmm. something like that. It's on the Thames. Yeah. That's, the, yeah. that's the pertinent information. It's on the Thames. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's in... It's in Scarrison Nashing distance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how this lets them take over the world, but there's something to do with the energy conferences. Yeah. Energy conference, man. Come on. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. They got a conference. This is his opportunity. Yeah. Hasn't, hasn't Broton now just got to the point of going, right, fuck it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't care. I'm getting me Scarrison out. <laughs> okay, let's destroy this energy conference because I've had enough of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The hell with it. <laughs> I'm done with this shit. Well, he hides this. He bit of a taste the... of the earth drink called whiskey in the meantime. I spent 700 years pretending to be Scottish. Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. What were you saying? As you can see, he hides the thing in the building, doesn't he? So pres presumably he's intending for the Scarrison to, you know, Eat the, the shit out of the building. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah. The, then presumably the human race goes, oh no, they're destroying energy conferences now. Ah, uh, surrender. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. If they could do yeah. this to an energy conference, they could do it to anything. Yeah. That's near the Thames. Bash uh, things <laughs> a bit. <laughs> he's not on the level of Sutek. Yeah. It's broke on. He's not. He's not up there with Sutek. He's not. No. no. I was thinking as I was watching this that the uh, the sounds of the screams when the Scarrison is <laughs> um, gnashing about. 
Um, they sound very similar to the 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 scream sound effects on uh, Doctor Who and the Pescatons. They sound like exactly the same. They'll be exactly the same. The same BBC. They'll totally be the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it's probably available online to use on your own production. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, and it is a shame about this. All that stuff of this garrison, you know, overlay from the video studio onto film. Mm. Yeah, work. It's Um, a bit rough. Yeah. Can't slow it down. It just kind of goes nash, 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 like a hand puppet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah. is a shame. And looks slightly like a really distorted spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> Some shots. It's got a bit of a spaniel thing going on. We've established it's a mammal, so that seems fair. There um, you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the doctor and the others, they all they all went to this conference. Um, the brigadier gets to shoot boy John. Basically, that's the that's the gist of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's happy with that. Um, and then the doctor chucks the signal device. I've actually the... said something like, get off my world. Yeah. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> something, something witty. Pithy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shame off. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the doctor plays fetch with the scarison. He chucks the signal device at it. Mm-hmm. That's a bit of a nosh. Yeah. yeah. Goes back to Loch Ness. Yeah. 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 Happy days. Indeed. Um, yeah. Well, presumably it beats the Borad. Yeah. yeah. Presumably, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they start a family. Yeah. yeah. Be, well, no, I mean, the just be like Nash, Nash, right? That's the Borad. <laughs> we end up back in Scotland. Uh, they've all driven yeah. back up to Scotland for the sole mm-hmm. purpose of the doctor getting back in the TARDIS mm-hmm. um, with Perry and then leaving. Um, yeah. Um, he does ask Harry if he wants to come along. It's not after it. Uh, yeah. like, yeah. Which is a shame because imagine that, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Yeah. Harry and, and uh, Perry, great. Yeah. Um, Harry that bit older. Uh, a yeah. bit more cynical, maybe. A bit, a bit less putting up with the doctor's shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be good fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then we get some more sort of Scottish jokes and then that's it. That's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Ensplainment. Ensplainment. Yeah. So, I mean, story, we didn't change a word, did we? We didn't change a beat. Not really. No. no, no. So it's all it's all production where, where it would change. It's all you yeah. know, in terms of the casting and so on. Uh, the design of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't think it's going to be as good because Terror of the Zygons is fucking excellent. Well, yeah. I think, yeah, really? the, the production team is less skilled. Right? You know, it's kind of, it, things aren't if going quite as well. Yeah. yeah. Canfield um, brings a hell of a lot to it. He does. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's basically your alien invasion story again. Mm. It's a Pertwee story in that way, in, in terms of yeah. basic idea. I don't know if it was commissioned back then, but it could well have been. It was, you know, you can certainly see it fit. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, in terms of unit, it's really basically... Elevated. It's basically the last row, isn't it? Um, it is, yeah. 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 I mean, essentially, Robert Banks Stewart, in the two stories that he writes, is kind of writing for poetry because Seeds of mm. uh, Doom is, is like a poetry story mm. as well, isn't mm. it? Mm. I, think I, think again, was... I, I think, I think, I think, and I, I think he would agree. You could argue he might as well be writing for Steed. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they're both yeah. very Avengers. Take take out the TARDIS. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and you know you could do them in the Avengers. Well, yeah. I mean, the Tardis is barely in this one, isn't it? I mean, you, you, well, yeah, yeah. You could have Steve turn up in his vintage car, and that's fine. You carry on with the story yeah. from there. Off you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although the Cygons would turn out eventually to be, you know, Russians in rubber suits or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Feeding you with LSD to see, so you can imagine them changing into humans. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. One yeah. of them pulls his head off, and it's Warren Mitchell. <laughs> we're all Warren Mitchell when we pull our heads off yes <laughs> I was there in a little kilt yeah <laughs> well anything else to say or shall I uh, um, um, um that's about it really yeah. so our doctor 
Nine. Nine? Ooh. Nine. I got two embers, then. Well, story. How many stories is <laughs> 28. <laughs> 28, I'll probably. <laughs> 28, so that's fairly early. Um, yeah. It's definitely hard. Yeah. I think it might be the last bit. Uh, no. 28 is the smugglers. Oh. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So that happened. Um, <laughs> I like the smugglers. Um, yeah. Don't know how <laughs> excellent it's in there, but yeah. <laughs> Fantastically, as ever. That was Time Ram. So I'd like to say goodbye. I've been Paul Ferry and I've been joined by Rupert Booth. I am no longer calm and I am empty. <laughs> and Barry Williams. I am lactating. <laughs> <laughs> Join us again next time for the spectacle that is the ninth Doctor in The Smugglers. We'd like to thank Ben Jones for our music. If you want to follow us on Twitter or X, if you absolutely must, I'm at Paul Ferry 8. Rupert is at Rupert Booth. And Baz is at Baz Time Ram. Uh, Baz and I are also on Tumblr. Um, we have a Facebook page if you want to look for that. And there's also a website at www.timeram.com. Um, if you'd like to support the cup, the cod, cod. If you'd like to support cod, support the cod. Cod. Support cod. Want to make a cod crook? Support cod. Almighty cod. Please be the cod. Yes. Um, if you'd like to support the podcast, you get um, a cod piece if you support cod. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and I'll yeah. <laughs> Fine. I'm down. Anything for a cod piece. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can uh, leave us some money on Patreon and get extra goodies and things, mainly things, or goodies, something like that. Uh, or you can just leave us a review on um, wherever you get your podcasts from. Join us again next time. Bye. Bye. There's nothing that you can't do. Hang about. Look out for Super Grand. I'm not going to have much to say about Space Babies. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Fine, you could fine, just fine. do it in, in baby talk. <laughs> I thought it was shite. Direction point! Direction point! A Doctor Who Podcast Network.